like it is seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yes, it is. It is. So we are excited. Uh, we're happy that you guys decided to join us. If you have not joined us, we hope that you'll join us soon. And for those that uh, will join us later, that's all right too. So, um, hey Gretchen. Hey Gretchen. <laughs> Good to see you, girl. How's it going? <laughs> All right, Gretchen, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Hopefully others will join in as well. Um, we're excited. Uh, we want to uh, basically start out by talking a little bit about <clears throat> why we called you guys here. So for those of you that don't know who we are, let's start with that. Uh, my name is Jetta. And, and I'm Vanessa. This is the lovely Vanessa. And together we are Our World, Our Way, 2017. 2017. Now, as far as who we are, uh, just to give you a little bit of background about Oh Wow, Vanessa and I together, we have uh, actually separately, I would say, we've traveled for our jobs throughout corporate America for decades. Um, we're married. We've been together for 20 years. And in our jobs, we traveled for work, but we also traveled for vacations. A lot of vacations. A lot of vacations together in 20 years. Can you imagine that, right? Um, so we decided just a, almost a year ago, well, actually a little bit over a year ago, six, a year and six days ago, we decided to take this bold leap of faith and just travel the world in our way and on our own terms. And so that's what we did. So today is kind of a celebratory sense in terms of we wanted to celebrate with you because just six days ago, we celebrated our one year travel anniversary. One year on the road. One year on the world. So Oh Wow has basically traveled uh, throughout South America. We've traveled through five countries in South America for the last year. And we've done so basically volunteering, uh, offering up our gifts, our talents, uh, our services, um, basically trying to help others and, and, uh, and pave the way or pay it forward in a sense. So that's what we've done. Now we brought you here because not only are we celebrating that one year Travelversary, we brought you here because we want to share with you some of the amazing things that we've learned in our first year of travel. Right. Yeah. In addition, we also want to give you the opportunity to ask those burning questions that we know you have. <laughs> we know you've got questions. <laughs> yeah, Gretchen, we know you got questions, right? Um, <clears throat> we also want to make sure that we share with you some of the tips and some of the things that we've learned throughout this traveling uh, in that one year of travel abroad internationally in South America, as well as being able to inspire and to motivate you to live out some of the wildest things that you ever, ever, ever imagined. And then we're going to share with you some of those popular questions that people tend to ask us whenever we meet them on the road. We'll share that with you as well. So that's why we're here. Um, so let's start. So the things that we've learned while traveling abroad in year one, I know I've learned a lot. I imagine you've learned a lot too, Vanessa, right? Mm -hmm. So what we want to do, we want to just narrow that down and just basically give like the, the, the top three things that we've learned in our first year of travel. So let's start with you, Vanessa. What have you learned, the top three things that you've learned in your first year of travel? Okay, top three things. Top three. Well, um, the first thing that comes to mind is that if – in South America, there are a lot, and I mean a lot, of stray dogs. Yes, they are. They I mean, they dogs. are everywhere. All kinds of stray dogs. I mean, you walk down the street, they're sitting at the bus stop. I've seen some get on a bus here and there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And not just stray dogs, stray stray horses. Oh, of course. Stray cows. Cows. Stray chickens. Chickens, yeah. Yeah. She's All right. over the place. So <laughs> if you ever de decide to travel to South America, number one, you need to know that there's a lot of stray dogs. Generally speaking, they're not normally all that aggressive in anything. Um, but if I could give you one piece of advice, do not look them in the eye. They will follow you home. They will follow you everywhere you go. We have been followed just because we looked at a dog and went, oh, hey, puppy, you're so cute. Dog followed us for 20 minutes looking for food. <laughs> so <laughs> do not look the dogs in the eye. Just act like they're invisible and keep walking, okay? Um, the next thing that I've, uh, I've realized is uh, it's, it's odd that 
we're traveling through what's considered third world countries. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I feel safer traveling through third world countries than I did traveling through the United States. Mm. It's sad, yeah. but true. And a lot of it, I think, has to do with the color of our skin. Yes. You know, in many of the places that we go, we blend in and nobody treats us any differently. Um, we've been through five countries now and there's a lot of police presence and the police presence here doesn't make you feel um, afraid no, not or at all. Yeah. irritated or anything like that. It makes you actually the police here make you feel protected. Mm -hmm. They're there to make sure something doesn't happen. And thankfully we haven't had any real issues since we've been traveling. Thank God for that. Thank God. Yeah. You know, even traveling on buses overnight when, when people say, don't do it. Don't travel don't by travel bus. Don't travel by bus. It's scary. In South America is scary. It's dangerous. You just have to be smart. Not true at all. You just have to be smart. Yeah. You know, no matter where you go, the third thing for me is no matter where you go, you're going to be confronted with racism. And for us, homophobia. You can't let it consume <clears throat> you. You can't let it deter you from traveling. You're going to see it no matter what. You can get that right back in the United States. Yep. That's yep. what we realize. You can see that right in the United States. So... To say that I'm not going to travel because I'm afraid that, you know, people are going to treat me differently because of the color of my skin is crazy because crazy. you get that in the States. You're going to get that no matter where you go. It's, it's, you a, it's a big world, but trust me, there's a lot of people in it, and you're going to get some people that are going to just look at you simply because you're different. Yeah. But don't let that stop you. Don't let it stop you. Yeah. So what have you learned, Jenna? Gosh, I've learned a lot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow, I've, I've learned quite a bit. Um, but if, if I had to just narrow it down to just, you know, a few of the things that I've learned, some of the top things, um, I would definitely say that I, I have a greater sense of who I am. Uh, and it's amazing because, you know, you, you, you kind of think, well, I know who I am, right? But the travel that I've had over this last year has really given me a greater awareness of who I am. Number one, I'm black. I mean, that's obvious. Look at my skin, right? I can't, I can't, I can't change that. I can't erase that, right? You, you didn't know you were black before. I don't think I knew that. Baby, you black. Because <laughs> <laughs> they tell you, they'll, they'll let you know when you, when you travel abroad. Yes. They'll let you know, hey, you black. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think, I think the, 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 uh, the ordeal I went through when I was in Chile, for example, because Chile was not my favorite country, basically because I didn't have the best experience there. So uh, in Chile, uh, I had uh, some difficulties, I would say, and I was volunteering there, of course. But uh, the thing that I, I, I think I take away from that is that now I know not to dim my light, not to tone anything down, not to conform for anyone, um, for any reason. I am who I am. I'm going to be who I'm going to be. And you either like it or you don't. So these microaggressions of racism, homophobia, and all the other isms that are so ugly, you know, it just tells me that, you know, that you just got to call people on their stuff. Yeah. Plain and simple. Like if they do something or say something that's out of the way and that's not right, you have to correct them and let them know that is offensive. Right. Plain and simple. Right. You got to be careful how you say it, but yeah. at the same time, you can't let people say whatever they want to say no, and think no. it's okay. Exactly. Exactly. Or do you any kind of way and think it's okay. Yeah. Um, so a greater awareness of who I am, you know, um, this black, bold, you know, androgynous looking woman and everything about me is woman, all Come natural, all, all natural. natural, no hormones no here. <laughs> exactly. So, so yeah. Uh, the other thing I think I learned is that, uh, People can be incredibly kind. Like when you travel to these, I always said this, that you have to be crazy. You have to have this crazy um, thinking to go and put yourself in these vulnerable positions of going into a foreign country where you don't know the people, you don't know the language, you don't know the culture, you know, but it's this beautiful thing about that, you know? Right. So, so for me, um, Whenever something bad happens, we, we meet we end up meeting these these beautiful people as a result right. of something bad that happens. You know, we've so, met some amazing 
fr- we've had some amazing friendships that we've met. So from it helps our tribes build your years. resolve. It helps build your 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 hope that there's still good people out there. Exactly. It restores my faith and my hey. hope in humanity yes. for sure. Yes. For sure. So that's one of the things that I learned. And then of course the other is 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 that. Uh, the propaganda that's out there in the media and the things that you read, you know, about how traveling and, and going to these, these, these foreign places, you know, are just, just not safe. I mean, granted, you and I, we, we make sure that we do our due diligence. We do our homework. We make sure that we're researching places and, uh, and we're not going to places to put ourselves in these, in these bad positions. But at the same time, um, we have to be smart in what we do, but, Again, at the same time, a lot of things that you hear and you read about, they just simply are not true. Exactly. Yeah. So you have to learn about these, these places on your own, do your own research by being there on the ground yourself. So those are the top three things that I think I've learned. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Chris. <laughs> hey, Julia. Hey, Tempest. Hey, Tempest. Hey, Tempest. <laughs> Julia. Hey, Chris. Hey, hey Jay. Jay. Thank y'all for joining us. <laughs> Yeah, so, so those are the top three things that I've learned in this one year of travel um, abroad, internationally, in our way, on our terms, through mm-hmm. oh wow. And those are the top three things that you've learned. Mm-hmm. So when you come to South America, make sure you know where you're walking. Look down. Look down. Always look down because there's poop everywhere. Poop everywhere. Dogs, yeah. horses, <laughs> chickens, goats, <Yep. laughs> cows. Yep. Yeah, and, and, and it's safe here, guys. Trust me, it's, yeah, it's, it's safe. It's much safer than you think it is. Than you think it is, you know? yeah. The yeah. big cities we've been to are no different from any big city in the States. Exactly, exactly. So let's get to our Q&A. Um, let's start with some of the most popular uh, questions that people have asked us throughout our travels, Vanessa. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's you. All right. So the very first question that people always ask us um, and to give you a little background, you know, as Jenna said, we've been doing a lot of volunteering. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we meet people from all over the world, I mean, everywhere from places that you wouldn't even expect to meet people. Yeah. Um, so the number one question people ask us is, where are you from? <laughs> now, if you are trying to learn Spanish, and you're using something like Duolingo, or you are using uh, Pimsleur, or uh, something to that effect. They teach you that when somebody asks you where you're from, uh, for you to say, soy de Norte Americano, <laughs> which means I'm from North America, right, okay? Right, right. But if you say that, in any of these South American countries, they will look at you like, huh? <laughs> they don't okay? understand that. They don't no, understand that. Right. They do not understand that. So when somebody says to you, de donde son? Your response is, Estados Unidos. Exactly. Very simple. Estados, Estados Unidos. Unidos. Estados, Estados States. State. Unidos. United. United. <laughs> United States. They understand that. They do not understand when you say USA. They think USA. When they say yeah. when they say USA, USA they don't USA, understand they say US. They don't understand the states. They understand Estados Unidos. As simple as that. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Yep. Uh, another question that we we often get asked is how long we've been traveling. Yeah, we get that asked uh, quite a bit. So, <clears throat> of course, when we respond and we say that uh, we've been traveling for almost a, a year, people are like wow. A year like that's like that's a long time it's really shocking for them you know especially for people who look like us yeah (laughs) (laughs) and of course after they after they they learn uh, that we've been traveling for a year the next question is well how long do you plan to do this and we've had a lot of people ask us even our friends from home ask us um, how long we're gonna be traveling for for and the honest answer is we don't know yeah we do not know Thankfully, it doesn't have to be decided. Yeah. You know, like Jetta said, we quit our jobs. Yeah, literally. We quit them good jobs. <laughs> <laughs> we quit that good government paying job. Good job. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're, we're going to be traveling indefinitely, basically, until the spirit tells us to sit still. Yeah. And we don't know where we're going to sit still when the time comes. Right. But, you know, as long as we're allowed to, we will continue to. Exactly. We're, we're exploring and we're enjoying ourselves so much that we just can't imagine going back to the mundane of a nine to five. No, 
<laughs> no, it's just so much we want to see, so much we want to do, and uh, and so many people we want to help. So, so yeah, that's yeah, not in the cards for us. Um, so I'm, I'm I see some questions that are being being presented right now, which is awesome. Thank you, thank you. So good to see you, Eric. Thank you, Jay, for your question. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So the um. The other question that we get we get asked a lot is uh, why we decided to do this. Well, the short story is that, like we said, Jetta and I have traveled for vacations and for work. Yeah, right. For like the last nineteen years. Nineteen years, yeah. And although we we found that we love travel, once we made it to Greece, <laughs> we realized we loved international travel. <laughs> yeah, Greece was in two thousand fifteen. So we yeah. did Turkey and Greece in two thousand fifteen. And, uh, you know, from there, it was just like, you know what, how can we make this permanent? How can we make yeah. this thing like, you know, a part of our everyday living? And we started to just go into the lab and just start to construct some ideas mm -hmm. and some thinking. And, and, uh, and here you have us basically three years later. Yeah. <laughs> and I will admit, I was not on board with it when Jenna first came to me with the idea of us traveling abroad indefinitely. I was like, you want me to quit my job? Exactly. What? Exactly. <laughs> but I have to say that it has been the most amazing experience and I wouldn't give it up for anything. Um, so we are, we're happy that we're doing this. We are. We're absolutely happy that we're doing this and we're going to continue doing it as long as we possibly can. Yeah. Yeah. So another question we get asked often is, uh, what's your most favorite country that you've gone to? Um, and uh, we I have, go ahead. Well, go ahead. the funny thing is, is we got asked that question a lot while we were in Chile mm -hmm. by children. <laughs> the kids that we were teaching. So we taught English in Chile uh, for about four and a half months. We were there. And uh, the kids, they always wanted to know, what's your favorite country? What's your favorite country? What's, what's your, your favorite, favorite country? country? And... Uh, of course, you know, in South America, some of the countries, they, they're neighbors, and some of the neighbors are not, they don't always get along. So uh, we, we were careful not to answer that. Yes, not <laughs> we, were, we were careful not to use any South American country. Right, right. But so. in all honesty, my favorite country that I've visited was Greece. It's Greece, Santorini, Santorini to be exact. Yeah, yeah. And uh, for me, I would say Santorini is definitely up there in the top echelons, but uh, Peru probably was my favorite in South America. So specifically the Sacred Valley. So yes. I need to say that. Sacred Valley is yeah. amazing. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Hey, Karen, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's see. So then we get we get this, this other question about, you know, where, where are you going to next? Where are you going to travel next? And everybody wants to know our plans. And honestly, half the time, we don't even know. Right, exactly. Like, you know, we don't even know where we're going to go to next. So what we do is we, you know, there's a lot of, of work. There's a lot of hours that go into uh, planning these trips and planning these different ex these different excursions and these different places to, to visit and explore. So half the time, we don't even know. Right. <laughs> so but we, we get that question quite often, right? All the time we get that question. So when we know, we, we, we discuss it, but we don't always like to say where we think we're going next because it could change. Yeah. It could change. I mean, when we first got here, our original plan was to only be here for two months in South, South America. America. <laughs> and, you know, uh, this actually goes to Jay. You asked the question Do we encounter many questions about why we're traveling through South America? Yes. Well, we get that a lot. And what are you doing here? <laughs> the, main quest, the main reason is because we want to learn Spanish. Yeah. 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 And we got here and decided to just stick it out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so that, that's one of the questions we get asked. And then, of course, um, we get this one, and this is an interesting one here, is how do you fund your travel? We get that question quite often, right? We get that question a lot. And Eric, you probably get this question as well. And for us... Eric does. I'm sure Eric, Eric gets yeah, this question all the time. I, I have to say, I'm going to paint a picture for you, <laughs> okay? You're at a, a restaurant or in a hotel in the lobby or what have you, and somebody sits down and you guys strike up a conversation. Within three minutes, this person asks you, so what do you do for a living? Right. You tell them, so how much money do you make? <laughs> and so you're like blinking, like, wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute, wait, did wait, you really did... just ask me that? Yeah, did that question really just come out of it? That's kind of how we feel when people 
are sitting down with us and after two or three minutes, they ask us, so how do you fund your travels? No, 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 no. I'm going to ask you all, don't ask people that question. A better question would be, yeah. what can I do? Where, how can I save money? How can, what, what, what can I do to help uh, take the burden off of the cost of travel? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, so can, can you share some travel tips, some travel yeah, ideas? Is, How can I save? You know, what are what are, what are some of, what are some of the, the things travel, that you do to uh, to sort of stretch your travel and, and yeah. make it a little bit longer, so that you're you know, so that so you're traveling the world maybe on a shoestring budget, yeah. perhaps. A better um, question might be. Um, um, how is it really expensive to travel the way that you're yes. traveling? Yes. You no, know? and those are questions that we have no problem answering. Right. You know, it but doesn't to, have to be. Right. Right. But to just simply ask someone, "How do you fund your travel?" It's the equivalent of asking someone, "Well, how much money do you make?" And yeah. that's a bit invasive, you know. So just kind of turn that question around and maybe. Rephrase it a little yeah, bit better. Rephrase it. How can <laughs> how can I do what you're doing? What mm -hmm. can what can I do to save my money? Is it is it really expensive? Blah blah blah. That kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, and I I got this question from from Dale the other day. Uh, Dale and I, good friends. That's my sister, former uh, coworker of mine. She asked uh, asked me if I ever miss having if we ever miss having a permanent home so that we can store our things. <laughs> <laughs> and the easy answer is no. No, <laughs> <laughs> no we don't. <laughs> no, no, Dale. Um, honestly, honestly, when we when we left, we actually sold practically everything. We we became minimalists, and a minimalist is someone who basically lives off of practically uh, nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like the material part of us, you know, we tried to basically leave that part behind when yeah. we left the USA. One, one thing I can tell you is before we left the States, Jetta asked me a question and she <laughs> asked me, what would you do if our apartment burned down and we lost everything? Yeah. And my answer was, well, first of all, are you and Jackson, our dog, are you and Jackson okay? <laughs> and she said, yes. I said, okay, we take the insurance money and go travel. Hey, simple as that. Simple as that. Yeah. And I was dead serious. Yeah. Yeah. That's when she knew that I was really, really serious about this. it. Right, right. And we're and we're every day we're struggling with that whole minimalist kind of attitude because yeah. we Eric still said have he too gets much. The question daily. Ah, I imagine mm -hmm. you do, Eric. <laughs> get used to it. Get yeah. Used to it. Okay. <laughs> yes. I want to address his question here. Please. He's, Eric asks uh, to give you some shaving tips. You can never get that smooth look on your own. Well, it's because. I am the barber, baby. She's the barber. I'm the barber. Yeah. I shave that head. <laughs> <laughs> Shower, uh, shaving cream and a straight edge and razor. A straight edge razor. Those straight two. edge razor. That's and a lot of hot water. Of hot water. Yeah. yeah. So you don't get those bumps, those razor bumps. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Thank Harren. you, Harren. <laughs> Okay, I think I saw another question. All right, we have another question out there. Uh, Gretchen Ooh. is asking to show her how to cover the finances for this. Gretchen, great question. Great Sora. question. That's a great question rather than how do you fund your travel. <laughs> right. Okay, so there's a lot of things that you can do to help cover your travel. Mm -hmm. As we stated earlier, Jenna and I have done a lot of volunteer work. Yeah. I mean, um, in, in, I can say that to give you an exam example of how yeah. volunteering mm -hmm. can save you money, we've been traveling for 12 months. And eight of the 12 months that we have traveled, we have not had to pay for accommodations. So that cuts like half your cost right there. Accommodations? Accommodations alone. Our volunteer work has covered our accommodations for eight out of the 12 months. Eight out of the 12 months. Imagine that. Now you do the math. <laughs> you got, you, and, and the thing is, is in some cases, you just have to get out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Um, Stay in hostels rather than hotels. Right. And a lot of hostels look for volunteers to work the front desk. Exactly. In exchange for a bed. Yeah. And they're clean. Mm-hmm. They're, they're a lot of times, some of them are more secure than hotel rooms. Yes. Yes. A lot more you secure than hotel rooms. You got to be somebody. buzzed in. Even during the middle of the day, you got to be buzzed, buzzed in. inside. Yeah. Those. And some of them still won't let you in even when you hit the buzzer. Exactly. Gated. <laughs> very much gated. Yeah. 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 
and you know we've been lucky with our Airbnbs. Every Airbnb we've had has been in a gated community. Yes, yes. So we're we're very conscientious about our money and very conscious about spending as well. So that's the other thing is that you know one of the things Gretchen that I want to mention to you is in, in terms of how to do this uh, <laughs> without. Uh, we're not cheating, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god no you gotta get in where you fit in man yeah yeah at least for now but that's that's year one of travel Aaron. that's year, year one, one of travel, travel. year so one of travel this so. year we imagine that this year is going to look a little bit different than what we did in our first year right so august 9 2017 yeah. to august 9 2018 is going to look different compared to august 9 of 2019 so. you know first the first year we it took us some time we're, we're getting our feet wet figuring things out as we go and we've made some mistakes yes we learned through we've trial made, and error yes, all the time we've learned through trial and error we've made some mistakes and we've made some triumphs so mm -hmm. you know oh jay oh my gosh girl jay <laughs> honey we haven't acclimated the diet jay we've okay. gained at least two pounds a month the food is just so good in some places well not chili so much. No, chili, Peru, four and a half months in chili, the food was bad. Peru, okay. the food was just fantastic in Peru. So, of course, we put on a lot of weight. Yes, um, we both gained like 20, 25 pounds yeah. in a year. And so, we, two pounds a month. Yeah. So, here's the, here's the problem with the food. In some places, <laughs> food in Ecuador wasn't great, but the food in Chile was bad. And the problem is when you go to a place where you can't really find good food, what do you turn to? You turn to comfort food, fried foods. It's hard to screw up fried chicken. Okay, <laughs> you you turn and to Oreos and chips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just because bad, there have been days choices. like when we were in Ecuador in Montanita that the food at our where we were living was so bad we'd oh go my. to the store and just get cookies to eat afterwards because we just needed something. Yeah, so something you something that tasted good. Yeah, so you remember I started the Celta program, right? And and we were there, and the food was just not good at all. So. So yeah, we, we did uh, go to uh, <laughs> go to uh, comfort foods and that uh, when we were there in Ecuador, and uh, of course now we have all this weight that we're we're trying to now get rid of. Yeah, yeah. Eric, you are so right. Um, people don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Yes, they refuse to go a bit rough, and we have totally gone rough. Gotten out of our yeah. comfort zone. We never imagined that we'd be living in hostels. No, no, number one. No, because I mean, you look at TV and the media, and they have horror movies about hostels. Yeah, you know, thinking that if you go to a hostel, you're going to get slashed in your sleep. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jason and Fred. You no, know, but, but that's not the case. You got you have to get out of your comfort zone. True. You, you have to think about the fact that what you had back in the States isn't what you're going to have on the road if you intend on not spending all your money. Right. And you meet some incredible people in these hostels. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, much of what we do, honestly, throughout our travels, whether we traveled before we started traveling this past year on our, you know, on our own, when we traveled for work and, and actually through our vacations, we have met some wonderful people. Amazing people. Throughout our journeys. You can't be afraid to meet people, right? to we've say made, hello. We've made some lifelong friends as lifelong a result friends. of being on the road. Yes. I mean, when we were in uh, Peru, mm -hmm. and um, we were in the Cusco region, yeah. and PISA, we volunteered for, was it two months or three months? Three months. Three months we volunteered at a chocolate museum. <laughs> a chocolate a museum. Chocolate Imagine museum. that, right? We handed out chocolate samples and made coffees and drinks and ice cream and stuff daily. But we met people from all over the world Everywhere. because this place was a very touristic place in a small little town called Pisac in the Sacred Valley, right? Mm -hmm. So they would drop these tour bus off of you know people that would just come there. They would come through our little chocolate factory. And we meet people from everywhere, New Zealand, South Africa. Israel, Palestine. Well, I mean, everywhere. Dubai, yeah. every people from all over the world. And when they would they would see us, they'd be like just amazed. Like, and know. most of them would look like with, what, what, <laughs> we would be standing out in front handing out our samples and they would hear us speak English and they would walk by, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> right. Wait, that's not Spanish I hear. <laughs> Exactly. So they would stop and talk to us. Yeah, yeah. And then they would say, well, you know, how can we follow you? You know, if you ever come to Germany or if you ever come to Spain, you have a place come to, to stay. Sweden, Australia, I mean, New Zealand. Yes, yes. We, I mean, that's, that, you, you can't be afraid to talk to people. Yeah. You can't be afraid to meet people. Yeah, yeah. And, and I have to say that 
for the most part, the people that we have met have been so kind. Yeah, beautiful people. Beautiful so spirits. kind yeah. and welcoming, mm -hmm. you know, and I have to say that my favorite people that I've met have been from where? Well, it's quite a few places. Canada is one. Canada. Canada. Definitely some of the Canada. Nicest we've met. Some of the yeah. nicest people come from Canada. Yeah. 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 And uh, New Zealand. New Zealand. The Kiwis are fantastic. Yeah. I love the Australians as well. Yeah. South I mean, Africans people too, everywhere, yeah. South Africans. Yeah. Oh my gosh. We've met a lot of people from South Africa. For sure. Yeah. A lot of people from South Africa. So. <laughs> Don't be surprised if you see us there soon. Yes. <laughs> yes. Back to Wakanda. <laughs> Oh my God! Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So yeah, people have to learn to get out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, Gretchen, you would ask how to how do you you know finance the the travel? Yeah, it's it's about saving money. You got to save money here and there. Different things that you can do at home. Mm -hmm. um, all things being said, if you're truly interested in finding ways to cut costs in your daily budget, figure out how to how to work in these travel costs. Go to our website and fill out our contact us page. Yes. Because we do consult with people about their vacation travel. You know, you may not want to do it on the grand scale that we're doing it, but yeah. you can do it. Mm -hmm. I advise everybody to get a passport because yeah. you never know when those secret flight deals are going to come up. Exactly. Uh, exactly. You may get an email. There's different websites you can sign up for. You get an email tonight saying that there is a $200 round trip ticket to Africa from Atlanta. Right. Who wouldn't want that? $200? You know, I mean, there's it's some, happened. Yeah. There, there are some flights within uh, the USA that are much more expensive than that. So Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, oh. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Eric, you are so right. The food in Chile is horrible. Yeah. But the markets, yeah, you're right. The markets are great. great. The markets are great. Um, one one suggestion that we can give you mm -hmm. that um, when you go to travel, you want to try to book an accommodation that has that has a kitchen. kitchen. Yep. Whether you're in a hotel or a hostel or a, or an Airbnb, yeah. you need a kitchen. Cook your own Find food. a local market. Ask your host where they do their shopping. Yeah, you only live not like be the at the grocery store. Yeah. You want to live like the locals. Find a, a, a an outdoor market. Mm -hmm. What and are, cook your own food. Exactly. And if they eat out, what do they go eat? Don't exactly. go to the touristic place where the mm -hmm. tourists go eat. Because trust me, they're going to charge you three times as much as the food that you get from the tourist spots. So think about that as well. Eric, you are so right. Peruvian food is amazing. Ceviche is my favorite. We era. were in Peru for we're five we're, we're, months. We we're gained, related. <laughs> we gained the most of our weight in Peru because the food was so freaking Good. Good. Yes. Okay. They flavor everything. Mm -hmm. I swear. I think people in Chile don't have as many taste buds as we have because they their food has no flavor. <laughs> no flavor. But yeah, yeah, definitely. And oh, a lot of potatoes. Yeah. He said they have like five thousand potatoes. Yes, potatoes. That's probably why we gain all the weight because of all the starchy foods. Tempest, you asked how hard do we think this journey would have been alone? Oh. I think it would be very hard traveling as a female alone, but, but I we've have met, to say we've, we've met, met a solo lot travelers. Of solo female travelers. travelers. Yeah. And it's all about being smart. Male and female, both. Male and yeah. female travelers. And I mean, you can go to these different countries and travel alone and be safe, but you just have to be smart. Yeah. You have to be smart. And I definitely recommend especially women if you're traveling alone to definitely look at hostels because you are going to end up um at a hostel with other solo travelers yeah you guys can work together amazed. and go see sites together it's always safer in numbers yes always yes. safer numbers if you go to a hotel it's not going to happen mm -hmm. it's not going to happen yeah. you're, you're you're just a passerby in a lobby right but in the hostels they have common rooms they mm -hmm. have pool tables sometimes they have kitchens where you can cook together and dining rooms and things like that but you have to do you have to do your research though to make sure that you're going to the right hostel because not all, all not all hostels are created equally. Yeah, yeah. But if you go to Mendoza, you have to go to the Windmill Hostel. Yeah, if you go to Mendoza, Argentina, go to Windmill Hostel, the best. So okay. what are some countries that you have on your bucket list? Oh, Gretchen, that's oh, a good question. Gosh, number yes. one, mm -hmm. Africa. Africa. Well, definitely. that's a continent. South Africa. South Africa, Cape Town. South Mozambique. Africa, Mozambique. Um, where else? Uh, New Zealand, Australia, Australia Sweden, uh, yeah, Croatia. Sweden, Sweden is definitely up there. Yes, Croatia. We've got our friend Anna in Sweden. So yes. we gotta go see. We gotta go see her. Yeah, some Asian country countries. Have we thought about that yet? I'd like to go to Thailand. Thailand, maybe. I'd like to go to Thailand. Possibly, yeah. 
Uh, Jay, how do you convert your Great monies question. as you travel to the different South, Very good South question, American Jay. countries? Very good question. Mm -hmm. We try to be careful and not take as too much money out of the bank at one time. Yeah. All of the ATMs here give you money in the current currency. And in every city, you can find currency exchanges. Yeah. Oh, nearly every city. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of places do take credit cards. Yeah. I can tell you that Visa is king in South America. Mm -hmm. Visa is Very king annoying. here, yeah. Visa is king. And another thing you want to mention also about South America is that if you come here, I would say probably have three major credit cards. You want to have an American Express, you want to have a Visa and a MasterCard because yes. Visa is definitely king here. So you may go to some places and they may be like, well, they don't take American Express and they don't take uh, MasterCard, but they only take Visa. So if you have all three, then you're kind of covered right. in that sense. And uh, one tip, one of the reasons why we chose to go to Ecuador first mm -hmm. was because they took the American, they take the American dollar there. Yes, that's, that's why we love That's an easy country Ecuador. to travel to. Yeah. You don't have to worry about money exchange. Yes. It's just the American dollar. And if you do decide to go to Ecuador, take small bills. Everything if changed. you go into a store with a 20, they're looking at you like you're crazy. Yeah. They want quarters. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they, they want do. either quarters or actually um, uh, silver dollars, mm -hmm. uh, not the, the Susan B. Anthony yeah. dollar. Yeah, that's what they want here. They want coins mm -hmm. and they want small bills, fives, yeah. ones, not even really tens. No, no, they want small bills. But yeah, you have to learn because you know the market it fluctuates all the time, so the dollar changes. So you have to make sure that you keep abreast of that as well. Um, when you're going from one country to the next, you're going from one currency to the to the next. Um, but I would definitely say if you can get a credit card or uh, some type of um, uh, a debit or a credit card mm -hmm. that doesn't charge you any kind of foreign transaction fees. Yes, that's really huge that's because all of the banks here charge you a transaction fee. Yes, you don't want to get charged by your bank on the back end as well. Right. Because right. those charges add up. They we do. learned that the hard way when we went to Ch went to Turkey. Yes. Yeah. 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 Eric, I see what you mean. Uh, Eric says that he, he, he meets a lot of female. Females solo females yeah the yeah. couples wow we meet a lot of we do meet a lot of solo females he says he doesn't like it when they have female only dorms because if he shows up and they have vacancies he can't oh there. yeah that, you know honestly throughout south america we find that there's not so many hostels that are in good ratings that have all female dorms and eric i have to thank you because we took your advice yes your when advice, it comes eric. to booking hostels and yes. we only look at hostels that have an eight uh, a rating eight out of ten or higher. Exactly. Um, and <laughs> we also double check and make sure that they're not charging us twice just because we're two people in a solo room. Exactly. Um, so that's another way to save money, Gretchen. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. There. Um, when we first arrived to Ecuador, we stayed in a private room the first. Yeah. The first city in Quito, and then when we went to Guayaquil, we went ahead and stayed in a dorm because we wanted to see what the difference was. It's really not that bad. No. You know, we stayed in a what was it, eight room, eight mm -hmm. bed dorm. Yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. Let's see. I think I saw Ebon. Did I see Ebon on here somewhere? I hold thought on, I did. On, on, <clears throat> let's see, Eric. Definitely. Let us know when you're going back to Thailand. We have to come see you. Yes, for sure. <laughs> Tell people to get cards that operate with the Cirrus network. Ah, okay. International ATM network. Plenty of countries would not take us. Wow. U.S. ATM US cards. ATM yeah. Cards. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely. It's definitely important to have the right kind of card because they don't take just regular debit cards. No, they don't. It has to be something that's either credit or debit. Mm -hmm. It can't be. Can't be just the ATM card. Exactly. Exactly. Good Did information, see? Eric. Thank you. Let's see. Just checking to see if Let's we have Yvonne, any other questions. Yvonne was on there. Thought. Thought I had a question there. Ebon. Mm, e e yeah. Nope, I don't see one from Ebon. No? Okay. All right, y'all. I think that answers all of our questions that we've had. Thank y'all so much for joining us. Yeah, for sure. Just a couple of things we want to point out before we go. Yep. Yep. Um, the main thing know. we want you to know is that we don't just travel. Right, Jenna? No, we don't. We do more than just travel. <laughs> um, we also, we, we write. Mm -hmm. um, we are artists. Mm -hmm. I'm an artist. I draw portraits. I make logos. Mm -hmm. I do book covers. I paint murals. Yeah. Jetta's a photographer. Exactly. Um, we share. We want to help. Uh, that's why we volunteered basically for yes. the full, almost a full year that we started traveling. Yes. 
together but we inspire so we want to make sure that you guys know that you can go to our website to see a list of all of our services that we offer and our website is www.ourworldourway.com again that's www.ourworld-ourway.com so and then last when we sign off tonight we want to make sure that um you guys has your passport been checked much Huh, girl? Yes. Yes, Jay. Yes. Oh, that's another thing. That's yeah. It is a really good idea to have a color photocopy of your passport with you at all times. All times. Um, rather than having like, if you stay in a place that has a safe, yeah, lock your passport up in the safe mm -hmm. and take your pat your your get a copy, laminated like a laminated, laminated copy. copy. Of Even your if passport. you decide to take your passport with you, yeah, pull out the laminated copy. Mm -hmm. Most places are fine with that. Yeah. The the there's only been a couple of times we actually needed the hard copy. Mm -hmm. yeah, so well, not it's many just times. safer not to pull out your passport, but our passport gets checked quite often. Yes, yes. Every border crossing. <laughs> and sometimes multiple times before you get to the border crossing. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, let's see. There's two more comments. Once you're in the country, though, it doesn't get, get checked as Hi, much. Hi, Vera. Hey, Hi, Sherman. Hey, Sherman. <laughs> My brother right yes, there. yes. So yeah, so make sure that you go check out our website and in the um, in the description box for the webinar for the, the, for the go, live here, here, go live here. This go live. We have video. our Facebook page, our Instagram, our our Twitter, our Twitter yeah, all of our, our YouTube channel, yeah. as well as our website. Mm -hmm. Please, we love getting likes. Yeah, we love getting loves. Mm -hmm. But you know what we love even more? Shares. <laughs> <laughs> so with that in mind, what we want you to do to help us out, we want you to share this video. Please. Share any of our content across all your platforms and just use the hashtag oh wow 2017. Again, hashtag, hashtag oh wow 2017. Remember, hashtag share, 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 share. Like, subscribe, and share. Please yes. subscribe to our blog. We have a blog. Yes. Devin has done a lot of amazing writing on there. Yes. I've done a little bit myself. Yes. Um, but we write, we share, we create, we teach. and we'd appreciate it if you help share our content. Hey, Kayla. Hey, Kayla. Where's my Tuka? <laughs> hey, Ella. Hey, Ella. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are so happy. Good to see you, Eric, everyone. Eric, thank you so much for joining, and we're definitely going to get you on <laughs> one of our Go Lives as a guest. Yes, 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 yes. And if you haven't, if you don't know who Prince Eric is, he is the minority nomad. Exactly. Check him out. Check his, 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 his YouTube videos, his Instagram, his Facebook. He's the brother absolutely is out fantastic. there. He is. He's out there. He's doing it. And, and for all my, 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 my brothers that are out there, black men that are traveling and want to travel, you need to check out Prince Eric. Absolutely. But, but really, girls too, you know? I mean, he's really doing it. We, we, we look up to him. Yes. Yes. <laughs> he's given us a lot of information. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Tuka, he heard my he heard his name. Uh, <laughs> How about if I say Jackson? What are you gonna say now? <laughs> thank you too, Jay. We love you too. Mwah. Yes, thank you all so much. We appreciate you all joining in and listening. So don't forget to share this video. Yes. And hopefully we'll see you again on another live event coming up soon. Yes. All right, guys, signing off. We're gonna go get some food now. We're hungry. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you later. All right, love you. Love you. Bye. Bye, -bye.